Well, they look about as stupid as I remember, but they're a whole lot more expensive. Like, they're almost 2,000 each. So I'm gonna have to test them out against something pretty legitimate. Like, we've got a bit of a phalanx here, and long spears were typically the anti-cavalry. So let's see how they do. Oh, uh, you, you left behind a rider. They're so fast that sometimes the riders fall off. What's up guys and welcome back to Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, that game that I've been playing on this channel since 2016. Like when I realized that today, it just blew my mind because over these four years, we've had a lot of updates that have introduced many new units, but also removed others. Now, we've had a lot of really cool ideas just kind of go forgotten, you know, until today with the Legacy Update, which has not only resurrected a dozen of these units, but hidden them all across the fields of the Church of the Wobbly Horse. And I gotta be honest with you guys, I kinda thought this meme was gonna die a long time ago, but now, I don't see that happening anytime soon. Obviously, it's been a long time since I've seen this map, but I can still remember the church and its graveyard, the open fields of battle with the two opposing camps on either side, surrounded by woods. I don't remember there being a smoldering lightning crater, however. <laughs> Which makes me think this is probably gonna be a new unit actually, right? Because he's never been in tabs before. We've seen him because of mods, which I'm guessing extracted him while the developers were working on him, but like there are only so many Norwegian bearded thunder gods this could possibly be. Thor is now officially in tabs. All right then, Thor, I've got a couple dozen crash tests. Uh, I mean, hobbits for you to lightly incapacitate, right? Because electricity is a non-lethal deterrent. So they're gonna be perfectly fine. Please don't take my ads again, YouTube. I swear, this is completely humane. Just you, oh <laughs> wait. I didn't expect that. I'll give it up, modded Thor had a way cooler appearance than real Thor, but real Thor makes modded Thor look like an absolute puss. Apparently the peasant is back too, and she looks very different. Luckily for us, and unluckily for them, it doesn't really matter who you are or what you are, all Tab's units are treated equally by lightning. I really want to see if Thor can do that multiple times, right? Do you have another one in you, Thor? Oh, maybe not. So he can do one big boom, but then it's just hammer time until he builds up another charge. So he's got a bit of a refractory period. I really feel like I could make an entire episode just watching Thor blow up hordes of units and then marveling at the renaissance painting that's left over. So how do you think a bigger unit would fare against that initial blast? Like, would Snuffy be able to take it on the chin? Does Snuffy have a chin? Or, or is he just gonna pop like a giant fuzzy balloon? I mean, it's an even fight, they both cost the exact same amount, and it's 1v1, so this should be incredibly interesting. Oh! He absolutely did take it, and now he's just kind of teabagging Thor. Oh, dick move, dudes. It's a battle of the titans right here. Thor's used to fighting giants, though, so I would imagine he's gonna pull it off. Bravo, either way, Snuffy, you really stuck it out there. While Thor was busy wiping out an entire generation of the Shire, I noticed someone took a giant glowing poop on this grave, which is a bit of a dick move, but there's a chance I might be able to pick it up. Oh, I see now. Wow, we're really getting all the super units right off the bat. The super boxer is here, and he looks a little like Goku in short shorts. How does this thing cost a hundred thousand? <laughs> We've never seen a unit cost that much, you know, outside of mods. Also, it's a really good thing that hobbits reproduce like bunnies. Otherwise, uh, I'd never be able to make this fight interesting. <laughs> this is gonna be the pay-per-view match of a generation. Go ahead, hit the bell, start the match. See what you got, champ. I would imagine you'll be able to hit them so hard that you'll make motion blur in a game that doesn't have any. <gasps> okay. Listen, there's getting a concussion and then there's having your body partially phase into a different reality. I feel like that's the point where you're supposed to toss in the towel. 
Yeah, you know what? That was just the opener. If I gotta pay this guy $100,000 to fight, you better believe I'm not gonna make it easy on him. He's gonna have to punch above his weight class. Go ahead and see what you can do against these guys. Now, remember, keep it above the belt. I know it's hard when their balls are dangling above your head, but still. Are you in there? He's not quite as sporadic as I remember him being, but then again, I don't even know if he's getting hit. The giants seem to be hitting each other quite a bit. <laughs> he's gotta be alive in there. Somebody get the ref, there's no way this is legal. After about five minutes of dogpile, I managed to find him. <laughs> that may have been a little bit overzealous on my part, but at the same time, look, he's got Super Saiyan hair. He'll get back up stronger than ever. I wonder what would happen if we had a bunch of Thors lay down lightning at the same time on a unit that's quite a bit stronger than them. Or like, uh, again, it costs 100000 We don't even have $20,000 worth of Thors, so you would imagine that this guy should be able to just suck it up. And, oh, okay, for a second there, I thought he just got deleted. <laughs> like, absolutely erased from existence. But, no, he's back and swinging. Like I said, to even stronger after the Frost Giant. Well then, that's impressive and kind of scary. Now that I think about it, it's kind of weird to see a grave in tabs. Nonetheless, an open one. Usually when warriors fall in battle, their bodies just kind of disappear. So what exactly have they been burying this entire time? Oh, their weapons stay behind. So that's what's getting buried. That's really clever. Blow dart. Were there blow darts and tabs? I thought the point of the legacy update was to reintroduce a bunch of old units, but like, I don't remember half of these. I mean, a blow dart does sound pretty sweet. Actually, no, it doesn't. What am I saying? It's just gonna be like a long range potion seller. You guys had better be lethal. I don't wanna see these guys stumbling around. I wanna see them drop dead. Okay. Are they dead? They're not dead. They're just put to sleep. That's not good. I don't want you guys to put them to sleep like an Advil. I want you to put them to sleep like a zonk. <laughs> Why do I say the things that I say? That's horrible. I'm actually impressed. Look, these guys seem really unique because the first dart knocks the enemy out, which is already a huge tactical advantage. You know, because then they're not attacking you and the rest of your army could just kind of walk up and stab them in their sleep. But then the second dart is lethal. So it's dose dependent. And if that's the case, then I'm really curious, if you have a bigger unit, does that mean you need a bigger dose? Would it not have quite the same effect? I would imagine you guys aren't even gonna be able to knock out the giants. Yeah, would you look at that? It's like trying to get hammered on a sip of beer instead of getting hammered by a large tree. <laughs> really sorry about that, guys. You may be unique and interesting, but we all get smushed every now and then. I really want to find this tipping point now because it looks like the effects don't stack up. Or the enemy changes color for a short period of time and then when they return to the regular color, it's already run through their system. So you're out of luck. You got to kind of pile all of the darts on at once. So if I have a ton of units attacking at the same time, it's still not enough. He's not changing color quick enough. Oh no, I might be wrong. Yeah, you see, this is why you go to a doctor for these kind of things and not a YouTuber. I can give you insight, but I probably shouldn't prescribe. I don't think he even got knocked out there. I think his heart just straight exploded in his chest. I don't remember there being some kind of monument out in front of the church. They didn't have the technology for that at the time. <laughs> so I'm kind of curious if this is going to be a unit or some kind of memorial. Maybe both? I didn't quite catch that. Oh, it's the poacher, of course. So what did this say? In loving memory of poacher, your arrows pierced all our hearts. The poachers used to be an absolute powerhouse. Right? They didn't have as much range as an archer, but they fired shorter arrows more frequently. So they could just mow down units. I, I mean, it doesn't really live up to stuff like Chuko Nu now, you know, like fully automatic crossbows or watches or stuff like that, but... At the time, it was a monumental ability. Yeah, they just one shot kill and then they're reloaded and firing again. They can wipe out two full rows of units before they even get reached. I mean, if they're gonna run around calling themselves poachers, they gotta try to poach something. 
<laughs> Might as well be a big game hunt. This is pretty much a fair fight. Almost the same amount of money. Something tells me Snuffy is gonna be ready for them though. I, I think Snuffy actually got upgraded. Now he, he doesn't mess around. He moves quite a bit faster and has a pretty decent charge. I don't think he's gonna flop over nearly as much. He's gonna ram through stuff all, oh, he was ready to run through them like bowling pins. Well, the poacher costs 120 and the samurai costs 140, so this is almost a fair fight. Ignoring the fact that the samurai can deflect arrows. Actually, I'm wondering if the samurai can deflect poacher arrows, because they are like, shorter and faster, a little bit chunkier. Maybe the first volley can be deflected, but the second one is fast enough to also get deflected. Okay then. <laughs> so, if we ever have to face off against poachers, we know that the honorable samurai can defeat the dishonorable poacher. It's what you get for hunting Snuffleupagus guy out of season. There was a time where we could walk into the Church of the Wobbly Horse and pray for victory in battle, but now the doors are locked, which makes me think we may want to sneak in through the roof. Is this even possible? Is there something waiting for me in here? What the hell is that? Why is there a sarcophagus in the attic of the Church of the Wobbly Horse? Wait, they actually made the Pharaoh? This is one that I can't actually remember because we had the modded Pharaoh and it was overpowered. He'd fire lasers out of his staff, but there was some kind of Egyptian faction at one point or another during development. I can remember the pyramid and the fart plague that will come out the top, but I can't remember any of the units. So what exactly are you gonna do? These guys are praying to you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. So even if they do pray, they can still hit you in the taint. I think it's safe to say we've never seen something like that in tabs before. Like, it's not quite laser staff, but at the same time, some of these units aren't meant to be an army themselves. They're supposed to complement an army. So why don't we try fleshing things out a little bit? Like, normally, having this many squires against this many samurai would be a slaughter. Like, the samurai are number two to one, the money's nowhere near fair, but if we put a couple of pharaohs over here, then maybe we would be able to get the enemy to bow down and... Get a sword up there, Rumpus. Oh, that seems real effective. And they can't get back up because the pharaohs actually get in there and fight and stand on top of them and just keep them down. They can kind of fight though because we've seen that they can kill the pharaoh swinging upwards, but oh no, they're fighting a lot. We've lost a lot of samurai. Wait, why are they winning? Why did they win? Your little worship circles are visually impressive, Teuton D's nuts, but I think we're gonna put you back in the attic now. Oh, I already know what this one is. Like, I've seen the developers teasing this for a while because I've been asking for this for years. Like, nothing is more frustrating in this game than seeing all of your ranged units march up to melee units and get demolished. Like, they would have clearly won if they had just stood still, but they're too stupid to do that. And you can't give your entire army commands. But now you can with stuff like the Flag Bearer. Oh, this might actually be the offensive one. Yeah, the blue one was a sword. The red one kind of looks like a shield. I think there was Flag Bearer, and then I think this is Banner Bearer? And hopefully this is the one that actually keeps units planted in place. Yeah, because we got a bunch of ranged units around. Okay, I definitely need this. I'll show you guys what I mean. So we've got 40 squires versus 20 archers, which is by no means a fair fight. But if the archers can get enough shots off before the squires reach them, then they could win. Problem is they're gonna stand perfectly still. Why are you guys not moving all of a sudden? You used to always move. Did they make Tab's units smarter with this update? Or a recent update? <gasps> well, don't I look a little bit foolish? I mean, not nearly as foolish as these squires who for some reason decided to bring banner bearers to keep them firmly planted in place. <laughs> yeah, so it does work. The melee units will just kind of sit there and get pegged one by one. 
it doesn't really have the effect I was hoping for, but it's nice to be able to have some level of control. I'm guessing if you die, then your effect wouldn't uh, matter anymore. Unfortunately, you were in the back, so you're gonna be the last to die. <laughs> oh, good shot! So what would happen if we hyped up a group of archers with the flag bearer? Like, would they charge into battle and run up to melee units? Because that seems like a huge mistake. No. <laughs> they took like a half step forward and then they were like, you know what? That's a pass for me, dog. You could just get in there and get completely wrecked. <laughs> it doesn't quite work the way I would have expected, but I'm gonna consider this an overall win. Because not only do I now have control over my units when I need it, but they've also made the ranged units smarter. Now, when we face off against a campaign, which I'm sure is gonna happen sooner rather than later, I won't wanna pull my hair out. I don't know what's come over me this whole time. We've had the Church of the Wobbly Horse back for almost a full episode, and I haven't used a single Wobbly Horse. How about we try the Flag Bearer, but I'm only gonna have him hype up a couple of horses. I wanna see how much faster they are in comparison. Okay, so it is noticeable. It makes units that do want to move, move quite a bit faster. That's kind of interesting. You can charge into battle and maybe rush archers. I like that idea. If you have to face off against a bunch of ranged units and the line is too far away, now you can plow into them. I'm not even commentating over the fact that the horse has just demolished all of those Spartans. <laughs> it was kind of a guarantee. Speaking of wobbly horses, don't think for a second that I didn't notice this. It kind of stands out and we have not seen a chariot in this game in a very long time. Uh, this was the origin of the wobbly horse and look at him. I'm almost afraid to see how this chariot's gonna get pulled around. Well, they look about as stupid as I remember, but they're a whole lot more expensive. Like they're almost 2000 each. So I'm gonna have to test them out against something pretty legitimate. Like we've got a bit of a phalanx here and long spears were typically the anti-cavalry. So let's see how they do. Oh, uh, you, you left behind a rider. They're so fast that sometimes the riders fall off. <laughs> That's amazing. And they absolutely crushed them. Like they just ran them over. I don't even know another army that I wanna try here. I just kinda of wanna see that again in slow motion. You guys are all gonna hold on this time, right? <laughs> Everyone's good? Okay, drivers have a nice wide stance for the most part. Some seem to be clipping through the chariots, but you know, things happen. It's mainly the horse that's doing the work. Let's be perfectly honest here. They're so smooth. It's almost off-putting. The weird fleshy tabs units. Oh yeah. Oh, they've even got blades on the side that take them out of the legs. Okay, so that's how they're running over more people than not, I would imagine. I, wheels don't seem to be doing a whole lot. That is really powerful, especially because they turn about as well as a hot dog in a hallway. <gasps> what is happening right now? Uh, they, they just kind of stack on top of each other and form some kind of horse Voltron? Horse Megazord, I'll take it. <laughs> this one is uh, getting nowhere fast. <laughs> I love it. You know what, I think that's gonna be it for this episode of Totally Accurate Battle Simulator, guys. And once again, I apologize for not getting to viewer recommendation battles. It's the second time in a row that I've told you guys that I will return with your comments and use them in a video, and the second time that something huge was dropped for this game. And I, I kind of figured that you guys would want to see this more, because a lot of those comments were specifically about this update. <laughs> but that being said, I will return for viewer recommendations eventually. Maybe not next episode, because I don't think we've seen everything that this update has to offer. There's probably like a dozen more units and a campaign and stuff like that. So if you want me to return soon, as always, be sure to like this video, let me know. And until then, I'll try to figure out how to get these horses off this roof. But thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.